So now let's talk about the anatomy of the eye. The eye, of course, is the organ we use to detect light. And if you look at someone's eye from the outside, the main things you'll see uh, are this big dark hole, or small dark hole, called the pupil. And of course, that is the hole that light actually passes through. Um, the so-called white part of the eye is called the sclera. In fact, that's what most of the eyeball, or what we call the orbit, is actually made up of. Uh, its main job is to, of course, just provide structure to the eye, but uh, the fact that it is white is not a coincidence. Like we said, white light means, uh, or something that is white means it reflects light of all wavelengths, and that's the main job of the sclera, is to prevent light from getting into the eye without going through the pupil. So that that's really what it does, is it blocks light. Um, the iris is the ring around the pupil. In fact, it's really what forms the pupil. Basically, it's a small, just ring-shaped muscle. Uh, it can get wider uh, and narrower. We'll talk about uh, why that happens in a minute. But the iris can get bigger or smaller, uh, usually depending on the light level uh, that you're seeing. So the amount of light um, that enters the pupil is dependent on the iris. So if you're in a brightly lit room, the more light uh, at present, the uh, iris will actually contract and make the pupil smaller um, to reduce the amount of light coming in. And if you're in a dimly lit room, it will relax and um, allow the pupil to expand, which allows more light to come in. Um, you can, uh, this is a reflex and you can demonstrate it to yourself pretty easily if you uh, go into a bathroom uh, or stand in front of any mirror and uh, in a dark room or dimly lit room and then turn on the lights you can actually watch your pupil um, constrict in other words it will get smaller uh, as soon as the light comes on um, again that's to basically just reduce the amount of light coming into the eye uh, but in, in in the dark or in dimly lit rooms it expands in order to allow more light in. Um, and of course, some people, uh, most people, have some sort of pigment in the iris. Um, some people have a lot of uh, darkly colored pigment, uh, mostly melanin, which makes the eye look uh, brown, sometimes really dark black. Um, and in some people, there's less pigment, um, and the absence of pigment, the kind of the blood vessels that fill the, or feed the iris, um, uh, mix with um, the muscle tissue and give it kind of a blue or green color. So um, that's why different people have different colored eyes. Uh, one thing to mention, actually, I forgot to say about the sclera is that in humans it is white, but in most other animals it's actually black. So it's still doing its job. It's absorbing light, preventing light from getting to uh, inside the eye, uh, but it just happens to be black instead of white. Um, and actually that's uh, one interesting fact about humans that makes humans different from most other animals. Um, and in fact, there's reason to think that the fact that we have a white sclera instead of a uh, black or dark brown sclera um, has kind of contributed to our ability to communicate with facial expressions because you can, the fact that you can see the white part of the sclera of someone's eye means you can tell what they're looking at. So if I turn my eye uh, left or right, you can see which way my eyes are turning because you can see which uh, the, the white part versus the iris, whereas most other animals you can't do that. So um, humans, uh, again, are weird for a lot of reasons, but one of the things we're really good at is communicating actually through facial expressions, and that's one of the reasons why. The cornea is basically just the covering over the eyeball. Um, it is transparent and uh, it is uh, basically made of uh, transparent epithelial cells. It is continuous with the tissue under your eyelid called the conjunctiva. So if you were to pull down your eyelid, you see the that kind of pink tissue, that's the conjunctiva. If you've ever had pink eye, the technical name for pink eye is conjunctivitis. Um, that's because it's an infection uh, of some sort um, of the conjunctiva. Um, but the main job of the cornea is partly to protect the eye, keep it moist. Um, uh, it, and in order to be able to rotate, it, uh, it has to have 
uh, moisture on the surface of the eyeball and the cornea helps protect it from that. And then of course you have the eyelids that uh, also serve that purpose. But the cornea is also really important as we'll see later in uh, focusing light that comes in to the eye. Um, in fact, the fact that it is curved like it is if you see it from cross section um, down here, that uh, shape is really important as we'll see later. And then the only other things from uh, outside of the eye, which you can see, which actually, of course, uh, all of these things, the pupil, sclera, iris, cornea, those are things you can see from uh, the front. In other words, you can see uh, from someone opening their eye. Um, and then on the back of the eye, if you could see the back of someone's eye, you would see uh, the optic nerve. This is the nerve, the bundle of axons that connect to the neurons in the retina, which we'll talk about in a minute and then carry information back to the brain. So we will talk all about the optic nerve later. Um, and then of course you have the extraocular muscles. These are what they sound like. These are the muscles that are attached to the eyeball and their main job is to rotate the eye. So you have two muscles uh, on the sides, two muscles on the top and bottom, and each one rotates the eye different directions. So you have the top and bottom muscles rotate the eye up and down and the uh, muscles on the sides rotate it left and right. Uh, we'll talk about eye rotation more later. So inside the eye, uh, basically the eyeball, like I said, is effectively just a sphere and it uh, works by letting light through. Um, so the interior of the eye is uh, first uh, eye light as it passes through the eye, uh, goes through the cornea uh, and then through the pupil and then the first thing it hits after passing through the pupil is the lens and the job of the lens is to help uh, again focus light onto the retina so the lens and the cornea both are involved in that we'll talk about uh, focusing light later on um, but the lens you know is lens shaped meaning that it is kind of oblong and uh, it uh, is important for focusing it also has the ability to change shape so it can uh, stretch out, meaning become flatter or thicker, and that affects the uh, way that light refracts through it and where it focuses. The ability of the lens to change shape is due to the ciliary muscles. These are muscles that uh, are attached to the lens by these tiny little fibers called zonule fibers. So when these muscles contract, they kind of stretch the lens out, making it flatter. Um, and when they relax, uh, the lens gets fatter. And again, that is important for focusing. And the bulk of the inside of the eye is made up of this fluid called vitreous humor. Uh, the word vitreous, anyone who is in Latin uh, may know, means glass. Um, and humor is just uh, like a bodily fluid. So that's all it is. It's just a uh, very clear uh, liquid. It's kind of jelly-like. It has some um, uh, very uh, gelatinous compounds in it, proteins and, and uh, some sugar molecules. Um, so it's, again, mostly water, but um, it's kind of uh, thick. And that's important because one of its jobs is to provide some uh, structure to the eye, some internal pressure of the eyeball itself. Again, is the, the outer wall is that sclera, um, which is uh, not a very strong tissue. Um, it's thick, but it doesn't have a lot of structure uh, of its own. So the, the internal pressure of that vitreous actually provides pressure. And so that means if you were to puncture your eyeball, the vitreous actually would leak out. And uh, one of the consequences of that is the eyeball basically sort of collapses, um, which sounds bad. Uh, but if the wound heals, then eventually the some of the cells that lie in the inside of the eye will produce more vitreous humor and it will eventually fill back up and return to its normal shape. Um, uh, normally the vitreous humor is, again, just empty, except for that uh, that thick fluid. Um, sometimes stuff gets in there. So, uh, for example, there can be epithelial cells that are inside the eye that will occasionally just slough off, um, just like the, the lining of your skin or the lining of your, your mouth. So it will slough off and eventually break down and get dissolved and uh, get reabsorbed by the blood vessels. But before that happens, those little cells or clumps of cells kind of float around inside the vitreous and you can actually see those. So if you stare at a solid 
surface like um, it's easy to do this if you look at up at the sky like the sky is a nice bright blue color um, you will if you look long enough you'll see little tiny uh, faint objects floating across your vision in fact they're called floaters and that's what those are they're basically little chunks of cells that have come loose and they're floating around in your vitreous uh, otherwise like I said the main job of the vitreous is just to let light go through um, because where light needs to get to is the retina so the retina is the layer of cells which lines the back of the eye and it is uh, where the cells that detect light are found and then the neurons that are going to uh, send axons down the optic nerve to the brain are also in the retina 